Which rookies will crack the starting lineup for the Cowboys this season? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. Uh, I am Marcus Mosher. Check me out on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Landon McCool. Follow him at McCoolBCB. Landon, what's going on today, sir? Not much. It's question time once again. I'm sure we've got some great ones. I'm excited to answer them. Uh, I, I know... I have my own questions that I would like to have answered, but uh, we're talking about cowboys, uh, ah. so uh, not not UFOs. Uh, that, that's uh, that's something uh, that's that's happening today as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, let's we should, uh, let's we get should it. though. It, the truth we is should. out there, guys. <laughs> yeah, locked on UFOs is the next big channel. We are hit. locked uh, on UFOs. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get to as many questions as we can today. The first yeah. one from Richard. He wants to know. Will Jalen Tolbert and Sam Williams break into the starting lineups at any point this season? Uh, I mean, starting is – is we should start out with saying starting is kind of not what it used to be, right? Especially on defense, right, where there's there's so many players that are starting. We right? should say, okay, take the majority of the snaps on Thursday. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a, a, more of what the questioner is asking, yeah. right? So um, – I think if we're going to consider the the wide receiver three a starting position, which we do, um, which I think we do, uh, so I, I think that it's certainly possible that Tolbert is, you know, the third wide receiver. I, I mean, I, I think we need to see exactly where it, it it starts out at training camp, you know, because I think that there's the possibility that he could earn that spot out of training camp. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think, yeah, we, we definitely need to see exactly where he is. We haven't seen any of that yet. You know, based on what he did in in, in college, and, and he was uh, pretty sure Major Applewhite was his uh, was his offensive coordinator mm -hmm. at, at Southern Alabama. Um, you know, I think that he moved around. When you watch his tape, he 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 wasn't you know one of these guys that was only playing on one side, only playing the boundary. You know, kind of. Uh, you know, we used to talk about that all the time. You know, when we talked about Des Bryant's tape, right? Like, why is he only playing on one side, and it always seems to be yeah. on the coach's side? And it's you know so. That's not the case with this guy. He's moving around a lot. He seems to be a, a, a very heady player. So if he's able to, you know, to get the playbook down, I don't see any reason that he uh, shouldn't be able to crack the starting lineup. And then for Williams, uh, I, I think he's going to be heavily part of a rotation to start out. That one's uh, a lot then, harder to see because they just have so many more. I mean, they've got more numbers on that side yep. of the ball, right? Because yep. the Marcus Lawrence is obviously going to play a big chunk of the snaps. You've got mm -hmm. Parsons, who's going to play as an edge rusher. You've got Dante Fowler, who has a history with Dan Quinn. You've got Doris Armstrong, who you signed to a contract extension. By the way, they also paid Terrell Basham last year. And That's you right. drafted Chauncey Golston. I mean, not that far off from where you drafted Sam Williams. Right? Sam Williams was picked 56, and Golston was 70-something. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's not a big difference. So there's just there's just way more players there. Yeah, I think that's the one that's a little bit more, you know, kind of hard to, to nail down just simply because I, I think it's largely going to be a committee you know, at that right defensive end position because they have numbers there that I feel like they are probably better as a whole using all of those guys than just using one of them and then spelling that guy. You know, I think having a heavy rotation there is probably the best results until – Sam Williams is is to the point where he's ready to kind of fully take over the the exactly. lion's share of those snaps, or somebody else. Maybe maybe no. it's Golston, right? Maybe Golston all of a maybe. sudden plays you know plays as well as he did in college, and he takes over that spot. And he's the guy that's playing every single first and second down because he's the better run defender. Or maybe it's Doran Armstrong, who's or only Fowler. You know, or Fowler. Fowler, Fowler can have a career resurgence and 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 be comfortable and, and suddenly pop in a way that he hasn't in a couple of years. So all of those are likely possibilities. Uh, I think they're going to play a lot of that by ear and just kind of base it on the way that the guys are playing throughout training camp. I just looked this up just because I wanted to see. Uh, Doris Armstrong is only a couple months older than Sam Williams, which is kind of yeah. hard to believe. 
No. Nah, I mean, well, he came into the league 20 years old, if I'm not mistaken. He was crazy, crazy young when he came into the league. That's why I, I, I think the idea of like retaining him was great because he had four years of, in the NFL uh, of experience and, and, and pr some pretty serious snaps. And he had, and he had, I think he turned 20, I think he's turning 25 later this year, if, if, yes. if, if only just turning 24. So he's still very, very young. Incredible. Uh, also, I should mention about Jalen Tolbert. I uh, I talked to Jim Nagy, who runs the Senior Bowl, late last week. I'm trying to remember when. Um, he said super mature, super hard worker. He said he wouldn't be surprised at all if he opens the season as the number two receiver. He's just kind of that, you know. He, he's mentally ready to take that spot. I don't I don't think the playbook is going to be too big for him. I don't think the jump in competition is going to be a big deal. Um, so I wouldn't be shy, surprised at all if we open week one and it's CeeDee Lamb and Jalen Tolbert walking out of the field as your top two receivers. Wouldn't shock me at all. Uh, all right, let's get to uh, some more questions. Uh, this is a good one from Zach. He wants to know, will Dalton Schultz take another step forward and uh, get close to uh, the elite status uh, with George Kittle, Darren Waller, Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews? Do we think Schultz has one more level that he can climb to? I think he has one more level he can climb to, but I don't know if he's ever going to be quite the elite players that some of those other guys are just because he isn't, you know, quite that kind of athlete. Yeah. Uh, I think he can be one of the very top end, you know, two way tight ends. I, I think if you're asking him to be kind of, uh, 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 you know, an elite receiver, you know, tight end or, or that type of player, I don't know that he's quite at that level, but as far as in the pantheon of kind of, two-way tight ends who can actually do both well, I think he can take his step up there and, and kind of be in, in that group. Uh, but I think the thing that's going to keep him, you know, short from the kind of Kyle Pitts sort of Kelsey uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Kittle range is that he isn't quite the athlete that those guys are. Uh, but I think that, that that doesn't mean that there isn't uh, yet another level that he can get to. Because here's the thing about some of those guys, you know, uh, especially with Kittle, Kittle struggles to stay on the field a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if Schultz can produce at the tier just beneath Kittle, uh, but consistently be on the field, I mean, that's almost as valuable, right? Like getting, right. you know, 100% of Kittle, of 100% of, of, of Schultz uh, versus getting, you know, something like 75 to 80% of a season of, of Kittle. So uh, I do think there's a step up he can take from here. I don't know that he's ever going to reach the kind of, you know, S tier tight ends that, that exist in the NFL today. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I think there's a chance he could become, and it's hard because I think he, his production is already better than this, but like a Dennis Pitta, when Dennis Pitta was at the peak of his powers with Baltimore, right? Just a really good two way tight end where you can leave him on the field all the time and you feel really good about him as a run blocker. You feel good about him as a receiver. He's just not somebody that's going to be a thousand yards, double digit touch, or double digit touchdown kind of player, and that's okay. They don't necessarily need him to be that guy. They wouldn't want him to be that guy. They, they won't target him like that. I don't think they want to get the ball to CD Lamb. They want to get the ball to Michael Gallup. They want to get the ball to a lot of these guys. So, what you need is a guy who shows up when you when you're when he's called upon, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 can can win the miss the the matchups that are that are presented with him. You're not looking for a guy that is someone you're looking to force feed the ball uh, right. uh, uh, as a, as a, the main focus of your offense. I think he's, he's a component of your offense, a valuable component to your offense, but he's not the focus of the offense. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and that's a, that's a great way to put it. I, I do. I think he can get better. I think he could definitely take a step up as you mentioned, but for him, it's going to be as a blocker, right? I, I still think there's times where he needs to be a little bit more powerful. He needs to stick on his blocks a little bit longer, but I think, you know, you kind of learned that the more that you're in the NFL. So I would not be surprised if we see him get quite a bit stronger and better as a blocker here in what year five, I believe. Was this year five yeah. already? Year five. Yeah. I went by fast. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let's take a quick break. So I can tell you guys about Built Bar. Imagine dipping your finger in that plastic tub of birthday cake frosting and then opening your eyes and realizing that it was only 150 calories and six grams of protein. That's what it's like to eat a birthday cake puff from Bill. Actually, I have it right here. It's just fantastic. Oh uh, I received my box of uh, birthday cake puffs last week, uh, and they're almost gone, which tells you how much that we like them. Uh, if you haven't tried their puffs, I'll let you in on a little secret. 
because that's what we we do here on Locked On Cowboys podcast. Mm-hmm. It's a chocolate covered marshmallow protein bar. Yeah, you heard me. Chocolate covered uh, marshmallow. It's 100% real chocolate, and again, only 150 calories, so you can enjoy it while eating healthy. Uh, go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com to enjoy the new uh, birthday cake batter. Uh, expe- this is it's going to run out. It's a limited time only, so make sure you go get a couple boxes right now. All right, let's, uh, let's get to a couple more questions. Um, this one from Zach. Who is the under the radar player on the roster that's really key to Dallas having another successful season? Hmm, it's a good question. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, and this is also a guy that I've kind of been circling for a breakout player, and I think a lot of other guy people have too. But I think it's really important that we see Osa Odigizua take another step yeah, uh, this year. You know, the, the Cowboys have numbers at the defensive tackle position, but and they've had numbers, I think, for the at the defensive tackle position for the last two years. I, I think what they are missing is somebody to kind of really step up and take that brass ring at the three tackle, uh, the, the three technique. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, there was there was hope for Gallimore, who uh, you know had a really got, strong training camp got injured early, missed some time, came back, wasn't quite up to you know the speed that we were used to, but had some good snaps there. I still think Gallimore is a guy that can be a huge breakout candidate as well. But I think in the interim last season, what we saw was a surprisingly quick ascension from OC, Osa Digazua. He was able to uh, use the, those long arms, use his ability to, to use leverage, use his explosiveness, uh, and 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 show that you know he has something there as a three technique, not just as a weirdly undersized one technique who can still do the job, right? So yeah, yeah. I I think if he can develop some more of his hand usage, um, he could really be a weapon that the that you know showed you something at different points last year, kind of got overworked early, and frankly, I mean if we look back. Did Yeoman's work? I mean, I mean, if you're looking at a rookie defensive tackle with all the injuries that the Cowboys sustained at the position, Osa did incredible work for a guy that it was overachieving for a rookie that that really had a steep learning curve coming into the NFL. I anticipate him turning that kind of trial by fire situation, much like Terrence Steele, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that kind of trial by fire situation into uh, good experience. And, and per, you know, kind of help using that to propel himself forward and taking a very big step next year. And I think it's important that he does for the Cowboys because they need interior pass rush. Yeah, that's a that's a really good one because I think you're right. Like if they can get somebody that separates themselves from that defensive tackle group, now we're talking about the defense being really good. Uh, I'll give you one, and I'm not even sure this player's on the roster yet. It's the kicker, right? The Cowboys <laughs> had so many kicking problems last year with Greg Zerline. Um, they decided to move on. They're going to play in a bunch of close games this year. Like they didn't last year and they got kind of lucky, but they lost almost every close game because of the kicker, right? They lost in week one because Greg Zerline couldn't make a kick. Um, it was the playoff game, I don't I, I don't remember if Greg Zerline missed one there, but obviously they, that had to be in the back of their mind. So if the Cowboys can get a kicker to come in and just be competent, they don't have to drill every 60-yard field goal, but just – Make the extra points, make the the layups that are there. That could be a big addition, and we saw it last year, like throughout the playoffs. Like these teams that have really good, reliable kickers. Like look at the Bengals. How many extra them. games did they win just because they knew if they could get it to the final five minutes, their kicker was going to make whatever field goal attempt they had. So that's one. If the Cowboys can get somebody to break out there, I I honestly think that could make them go from a nine and eight team to a 12 and 5 team like just something as simple as that yeah i mean uh, i think they like this kid that uh from texas tech that they got in their undrafted class uh i mean enough so that they i think cut one of the other kickers that they had in the roster yeah. so uh, i think you know they they clearly have some people in mind it's, it's going to be a competition um you know t- kicker is such a difficult position to get excited about because as soon as you like somebody, they're going to turn bad. But it's so important though. I mean, I I just watched the last year of the playoffs and it's like that. It it sounds weird, but I look at the the head coach, the quarterback and the kicker combo. If you have all three of those, you're going to win a bunch of games, right? 
I've seen it happen with Baltimore, with Harbaugh and uh, Justin Tucker. They win almost every close game because when it ultimately matters, their kicker makes every kick. If the Cowboys can get something, well, again, not Justin Tucker, it's not something, not nothing like that, but something close to that, it's a team that could easily win 12, 13 games this year. Certainly, certainly is. A I chance. know you hate talking about kickers. I know. No, I know it, it it's it, it's it, the reason I hate it is not because I hate kickers or they hate the kicking game. That's not it at all. It's just that it's so random. It's just so like the, the kicker position. You're good, and then you're not, and yeah. then and then and it's it's almost like that quick. Uh, so it's it, it feels like kind of constantly trying to chase talent at the position. Uh, it, it almost doesn't work because y- you know you spend a lot of time trying to like you know find that talent and then you believe in it and uh, you know it's really difficult to kind of parse when it's time to cut bait when it's time to you know trust a guy that he'll get through it it's 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 just a very tough position to evaluate because there's no there's no consistency and and the ones who do have consistency are the Hall of Famers there's like two of them in the, in the league is it so. harder to find a great kicker than a great quarterback? I would say yes, right? No, I think it's actually easier. But the problem is, is that when you have a great quarterback, he stays a great quarterback. Yeah, they're, they're more quite consistent a year to year. Yeah, you could find a great kicker on the trash pile. The problem is, the next game he'll be a terrible kicker. You know, it's, it's and fair. so I, I think finding the consistency long term to do what you know what what Dan did for for years, yeah. what 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 you know yeah. Tucker is, is doing, like those guys, like. Uh, I mean, even Mason Crosby, you know, it's like these oh, guys yeah. are, are, are rare, you know, they're, they're hard to find. Uh, and and I think that it kind of ch- you can really get into a situation where you're chasing the dragon there. And it's worse than quarterback in some situations, because a lot of times the quarterback will show you who you are, who, who, who he is early. The kicker is going to show you one version of himself kick great for three games. And then suddenly, you know, get something. Well, I'll give you his example. And, and, yeah. D- Daniel Carlson, who the Vikings drafted in the yep. fourth round, his first game, he missed four kicks. The next game he missed two kicks and the Vikings cut him after two games. Uh, fast forward a year, he signs with the Raiders and now he's a pro bowl kicker for the Raiders and he's made a million field goals, big field goals for them. It's, it's this is one of the harder positions to evaluate. And if you can find a guy that is consistent from year to year, Oh my gosh, it just gives you such an advantage every single game. Yeah, it's a hard position to evaluate because your your evaluation is either right or wrong depending on what time someone's asking you. You yeah. know, it's like it's just kind of Crazy. go ebbs and flows no matter what. It's it's so yeah, I, I think it's I, I have a hard time criticizing any kicker uh uh uh, uh you know strategy because it's like throw anything at the wall, who knows, honestly. Yeah. All right. Next question from Chris. And I really like this one. Which position groups, if any, have gotten better since the end of last season? Are there any free agents that can bump a group up? So let's just answer that first question. Now, compared to the playoff game against San Francisco, are there any positions that you think are better? Yeah. I mean, look, I think the thing that Cowboys fans are struggling with is that the most improvement your team is likely to get you know, from one season to the other is not because you signed a free agent, a top end free agent, or uh, you, I don't know, cr- cr- you know, made a trade. I mean, those things can obviously in- in- increase your, your, your team in, in kind of very quick ways, but the most improvement your team is going to get is how well your young players improve from season to season. And the Cowboys are filled with young players. I'm pretty sure a list just came out with like, Top 25 players under 25. And the Cowboys had three. PFF, yep. The Cowboys had three of them. The Cowboys had three of them. So, like, the the Cowboys have a very young team that did very well last year. But I think the thing that we need to kind of take hope in is that they took that experience as a young team and they're going to grow. They're they're another year older. They're going to get better. Some of these guys that we liked that were, that played great, fantastic are are improving players. So, uh, so I guess to specifically answer the question, I, I think that. You know the the defensive line group potentially has a bit has a has a potential. I would say the interior defensive line because it's the same group yeah. plus Ridgeway, right? Yeah, and and the, the, those guys are all going to grow. Uh, I think that there's the potential for uh, the defensive line. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the, the offensive line to kind of to get better. I mean, maybe not immediately because they take a step back, losing Connor Williams' experience, losing Leo Collins, but these are young players who are going to grow into those spots. 
and, and there's a potential for the, for the, that spot to get better. I think the I think the quarterback position got better because Dak is a year away from from the injury, sure. a year more experienced. Uh, I think the the, the I'd linebacker, say I'd say tight, tight end, end yeah. one because you, you didn't have Blake Jarwin at all last year. So what have you got? You got Dalton Schultz, who's a year older. You've got Sean McEwen in year three. You brought back Jeremy Sprinkle and you drafted Jake Ferguson. Like yeah, as much as I I'm not maybe the biggest Jake Ferguson fan. He's better than – who were the other guys? Ian Bunting they had on the practice yep. squad last year. Like, Sean McEwen? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Don't be talking about tight end one that way. That but, yeah, that's sorry. that's definitely a position that I could see being a lot better, right? Because you just have so many young guys and you didn't really lose anybody of note. Linebacker, man. I mean, like y- – you. That's you... some – uh, addition by subtraction let me tell you you cut some dead weight and you've got some young players you're going to be play better football this year you know so uh i think a lot of these position groups in fact i would say most of these position groups probably improved or are on their way to improve from last year i think you know wide receiver you cut a, a talented player but m- there could be some addition by subtraction that's, with that guy that's too. the one i worry about because not only did you lose amari but you also lost cedric wilson who was a really good depth player for you it's I wouldn't be shocked if a year from now we feel really good about the receivers. But going into camp, I think it's pretty clear that it's a downgrade compared to what you had at the end of the season last year. I wouldn't be surprised if the wide receiver group as a whole is not as talented as it was last year, but the offense is is more efficient than it was last year. And I think that that's, that's – what they may be trading for, you know, is that like a lack of expl- maybe a, a giveaway in some of the early explosion while Tolbert's still learning the offense, but with a more efficient offense that is actually more reliable. I think that would be a fair trade off if that's ultimately what the Cowboys get. All right, let's take one more quick break to tell you guys about Rock Auto. <laughs> With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local auto parts store to stock up on all the parts you need. But Rock Auto has everything from engine control modules and brake parts, motor oil, and even new carpet. Whether it's for your classic or your daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. Best of all, prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. All right, Landon, next question from Mike. Uh, What do you believe the plan is when Tyron Smith misses a few games this year? Who's going to play left tackle? I think it depends on when it happens. You know, I think uh, – Let's say say he gets hurt in in preseason and he's not available. Then I think that – then we'll have to see how training camp goes. I mean, honestly, because uh, because I, I think that all of it is going to uh, the obviously the idea is that I think they'll have a short term solution at tackle uh, for the immediate early part of the season, and maybe that's a, a a vet that they sign as a kind of a third tackle. They check to see where they are with well, let's go. I mean, I, I would feel kind of kind of a little nervous about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, they'll see where ball is, you know, maybe, maybe the solution there early is to see if steel can play left tackle while somebody else plays right tackle. Um, I, I have to imagine that all of that is going to be determined in training camp. I think they need to get in there and see where those guys are and determine if they need to bring in a, sw- a at least a temporary swing tackle. They would love for ball to win that swing tackle job. <laughs> I'm I mean, sure. that's, that's clear, right? Like they, that's the, the ideal situation is have him win the swing tackle job. That way, if Tyron gets hurt, you don't have to move Terrence Steele. You don't have to, you know, move multiple guys. Is that realistic? We'll see. But I, I think that's the plan. I think their I think their long-term plan is for Smith, for Tyler Smith to be the backup left. tackle. Yes. Uh, you know, in the idea is that if you have to swing Tyler out to Tyron's spot, You've got a couple different guys you like at guard that you could plug in there at left guard, uh, you know, maybe more than you you like who your you know fit six offensive lineman uh, tackle is, right? So I think it really depends on what training camp looks like, uh, how Tyler Smith looks in training camp when he does play tackle, how the other tackles on the roster look, 
and what's available on the street, you know, versus that. I, I think all of those, I think what we'll see is that they, they probably won't sign a veteran tackle early. They'll see what they've got in these guys a little bit. If they feel like they need to, uh, even if they feel like these guys are good and they're close, they may still want to sign a veteran swing tackle as insurance, but they won't do it early because they don't want that guy getting hurt in training camp. And they want all those guys to get those reps uh, uh, to see what they've got before they they kind of invest in, in, in having to pay an ex- extra money for a veteran swing tackle. Makes perfect sense. Um, all right, last question. This one from uh, at Lego underscore Lord Vader. I, like it. I think he might be joking. Maybe he's just trying to, to, to see what I think here. But uh, he wants to know, why do people think that Anthony Brown is a good player? He played good football last year. I don't know. <laughs> That's a I mean, good answer, right? I, it's, yeah. I mean, look, I mean, we can say what you want. I mean, I mean, we were very much Anthony Ball. Uh, 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 Anthony Brown. Yep. Anthony Brown. Sorry. Not, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. Detractors, you know, yep. coming into the season last year. We we were very nervous about the idea that Ball, uh, the <laughs> Brown, I keep saying Ball, that Brown is going to, uh, was going to have that spot and that we were all pushing for Joseph to kind of go and take that spot. And, you know, I think we all circled it as a problem area for the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. I think it's hard to go through that all of last year and, and look at Anthony Brown as a problem on this defense. In fact, I would say he was one of the best players on this defense last year. I don't know if that's going to happen again this year. Um, who knows? You know, re- you know, regression is a thing, especially on defense. But I mean, I, I, I was clearly proven wrong. We've seen Anthony Brown play good football before when he's healthy. Maybe he's a decent player. You know, maybe that he's developed into a decent player. I think he's a guy who has the traits. He now has the experience. He's shown that he can play in this league against good players. Um, so I think it's maybe time to kind of accept that maybe Anthony Brown could be a, a better than average cornerback in this league. I mean, there's also a couple of things playing it. He's had two years that have been below average. And then he's had two years that have been well above average. And I'll go into the stats in a second. But when it comes to cornerbacks, if you're not <laughs> – if you're not shutting down a receiver or you don't get double digit interceptions every year, people think you're bad, right? That's just yeah, kind of exactly. the nature of the position. Byron Jones gave up like 300 yards one season and didn't have an interception and Cowboy fans hated him for it, right? Like he was the opposite. Like he was the opposite of Trevon Diggs was not giving up any yards, but just didn't get any interceptions and people hated it. I also think there's this, <laughs> we have so many great stats out there now and so many ways to find great stats, but there's the context is missing all the time. For example, oh, yeah. I saw a stat yesterday. I posted, I posted the top eight cornerbacks in the NFC East. You can agree with me. You can disagree with me, whatever. And all these people were replying, but Anthony Brown gave up 836 yards last year. How is he a good cornerback? It, we'll compare that to other cornerbacks in the league and it's not even close. Well, let's, let's dive into this a little bit more. He had 122 targets against him last year, which is an insane amount. And his pass rating allowed was 78.4. The NFL average pass rating last year was 90.8. So when quarterbacks were targeting him, they were having below average success. He gave up five touchdowns, had three interceptions. He had two touchdowns. Like if that's your number two quarterback and you're just you're giving up a 55 or 53 percent completion percentage, just really, really good. I can't stress that enough how impressive that is. And yet all they see is the yardage total. And that's yeah. all anybody talks about. It's just, there's no context there. I, I mean, listen, you're infringing on my brand right now, Marcus, but I, I, I absolutely 100% the context is super important. I think those two numbers, you say he had 122 targets yet still maintained a 55% completion percentage, a less 53%, 53%. 53%. And then 75, what was it, the quarterback rating or something? like Seven, I mean, that- 78.4. Again, the NFL average quarterback rating with all those awful quarterbacks was 91 last year. So he basically was able to eat up all those targets and have diminishing returns for the quarterback yep. while also basically helping promote, you know, Diggs getting 11 interceptions last year because – Teams didn't stop throwing away from from Diggs. Exactly. You know, they 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 didn't they didn't go pick. I mean, even though Brown got all those targets, they kept throwing Diggs his way, and he kept getting interceptions. So, yeah, I, I, I guys like 
I think if he's healthy, Anthony Brown has deserved, has earned a shot to keep his starting spot at the very least. And, and if not, like maybe shuffle around inside to make room for him and Joseph. But I, I, I don't know why anyone would be complaining about Anthony Brown's play, play after last season. And the other part about Anthony Brown, Anthony Brown's game that we don't talk about, like early on in his career, he was a bad tackler. In 2019, yeah. he had a missed tackle rate of 29%. 2020 was 4.9. Last year was 7%. Like he became a very, very good tackler last year. And when you combine that with being a you know above average corner in terms of passer rating, interceptions, pass breakups, he's a good player. Is he flashy? No. Is he the most dynamic cornerback in the league? No. Is he going to take away a number one receiver? No. But that's okay. You're not asking him to do that as a number two cornerback. He's just a really solid, reliable corner. And that's what exactly what you want from your CB2. Absolutely. And he look, I mean, I think the, the thing that would you have, would you take what the Cowboys defensive backs did last year? I would. I'd take that again in a heartbeat. Anthony Brown was one of the starters in, in that group last year. And 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 much like offensive line, you know, the 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 measure of your defensive back is not about any one individual player. It's about how the collective plays. Uh, he's a huge part of that. And and I think collectively the Cowboys had a really good season on the defensive back exactly. last year. Uh, Anthony Brown, good. That's that's the way we're yeah. going to end, end the podcast. So, uh, yeah. all right, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we got another special episode for you guys later in the week uh, with Locked On Bucks. We're going to be talking about the Week One game already. I know it seems soon, uh, but we're not that far away. It should be a lot of fun. Make sure you're downloading the podcast wherever you get your podcasts: Google Podcast, Apple Podcasts. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, you can follow the show at Locked On Cowboys. You can follow Landon at McCoolBCB. I am at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you guys next time.